On today's episode, we will be talking about several finished knits, a new weaving project, and a new cast on. everyone, I'm Marina and this is Pineapple Knits. This is my channel dedicated to knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn and you can connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week and if this is your first time viewing this channel, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I'm coming to you from coastal South Carolina. We're having a beautiful sunny day and I can't wait to share all my knitting with you today. But before I share my projects with you, I would like to talk about what I'm wearing. This is my Dotted Rays Fade Shawl by Stephen West. I think I may have followed just the original Dotted Rays pattern, but I used one of my one-of-a-kind fade kits that I carry sometimes in the shop. So let me show you how massive this shawl is. This shawl is huge. <laughs> I started it uh, right here and it has a series of increases that carry it the length of the shawl. It is so huge. <laughs> this kit was one of my one of a kind fade kits like I mentioned and it was uh, six skeins and each skein was 50 grams each. So this is a full 300 grams. That's like three full skeins of yarn. And so it's really giant. I mean, it's so giant, obviously I can't show you the whole thing. <laughs> but I love these giant eyelets in here. I don't know if you can see how giant they are. They're so pretty though. This is just such a fun, fun pattern. So if you're looking for just a really, it's an interesting knit, but it's not too complicated and it really showcases variegated, speckly type yarns like the ones I carry in the shop. This is a really great pattern to showcase all of those beautiful yarns. On my mannequin day today, I have the Hipster Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. It is kind of a classic pattern. It's so popular and it's a really fun, fairly quick shawl to knit. I knit it out of uh, worsted weight yarn, I believe. I think you can do either DK or worsted. Both kind of are interchangeable with this pattern. And it is knit out of my yarn, pineapple yarn in the colorway Profound. And so it's just this beautiful kind of indigo violet color. It's this was my favorite color several years ago. I just, I loved this color so much. Since it's springtime, I'm burning a springtime candle. This is cucumber slices. I carry this candle in my shop. And let's get started with all the things that I have knit up. So the first thing I wanna share with you is something I have been working on for weeks and it's about time that I finished it. This is my beautiful pastel fade sweater. This is, oh, it's so cute. It's for my seven-year-old daughter. And I used a variety of yarns that I had in my stash. These were all samples that I had dyed up, mostly from my Glow Club and my Sun Club from 2020, maybe some from 2019 as well. I also have uh, two colorways that I carry in the shop. Uh, little Paper Umbrellas and Hazy Sunrise. I go into more detail with the, about this knit and these yarns in past episodes, but what you haven't seen and what I haven't shared with you is I steaked the front of this cardigan. And so with the original pattern, I used the Kids Basic Raglan by Katherine McMillan. It is a perfect vanilla sweater knit. It is great if you have some kind of details you want to put on the sweater. If you just want a really simple sweater pattern, it's perfect. And I knit the size eight. And what I did is I knit it in the round, but I added several stitches onto the front so I could do a steek. 
and um, I used the instructions from Tin Can Knits called Steek. It's just a blog post on their blog and I'll link it below, but it's a very simple way to do a steek on a sweater. And then I added these super cute buttons and they're just plastic pink buttons. I think they're about an inch wide. Um, I purchased them from Amazon because I really, really needed to get this sweater done. <laughs> and so uh, I just really looked for something that I thought would coordinate with the whole sweater. I looked for buttons in my stash. I actually have quite a few buttons in my stash, but I didn't have, I think I needed seven. And so um, unfortunately I didn't have seven matching buttons and I didn't wanna do mismatch buttons or anything real funky because of all that was already going on in the sweater. She's a girly girl, I knew she would love pink. And so this pink is a really, really pretty, uh, it has slightly yellow undertones. And so you get kind of a peachy pink color, which works really well with the other tones in the sweater. So like I said, for this sweater, I used a variety of different yarns. These are a fingering weight held double. And what I did, and I go into more uh, description of this in past episodes, but I selected about seven or eight different colors, laid them all out, thought that they would make a good fade. And then I knit colors one and two held double together. And so it's a double stranded sweater, but it has two different colors held together throughout the sweater. I looked at the final measurements of the sweater in the pattern and divided that by roughly about by the number of skeins that I had or colors that I had. And that ended up being about two inches per color combination. And so uh, starting at the back neck, I did two inches of colors one and two held together and then I, I broke off color one and added color three. So then I knit uh, two inches of colors two and three held together, then three and four, four and five, and so on until I reached the bottom. And it really lent itself to a beautiful fade. I had about 50 grams of each color and even with the sleeves, I did not run out of any colors, so it was plenty of yarn. I think this would be a really great pattern for, um, you know, after you knit a pair of socks, if you have quite a bit, you know, about a half a skein left over for a lot of us, if we're doing contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs, uh, we have about a half a skein left over, so that this would be a great project for that. Um, and then what I did for the rib trim, like the neckline and the button band here, I just had a DK weight of natural merino wool yarn. It's just the natural undyed shade. And I thought it would be just a really soft contrast. It would kind of tie in all the colors together. Um, I played around with a couple of different colors, but honestly, what it really came down to is this was already caked up, and so I could just quickly add it to my project and knit it up. So that is it for the pastel fade sweater. I'm gonna be honest, it has already been worn every day for about the last week and a half, and so it is not in pristine condition. There is marker on here. Um, yeah, it's it has already been worn quite a bit, which is great. I mean, that's that's why I make these sweaters. That's why I knit these sweaters for my kids. So uh, all in all, it's a great success. I need to take photos of it before it gets any more marker or gets any dirtier for sure. <laughs> I also wanted to mention in the pattern, um, for those of you who've been following me for quite a while, I'm a loose knitter. I always go down a needle size in this pattern was no exception. I went down a needle size uh, with this pattern. And so I think I knit it on a, I think I used a, th a US size three for the rib and used a US size five for the rest of the sweater. Moving on, I want to share with you a couple of finished socks that I have right off 
of my circular sock machine. Um, how I normally knit socks these days is I use my circular sock machine, which is an Erlbacher Gearheart Speedster. I'll put a link below in case you're interested in checking it out. And I filmed all of this, so eventually I will get that video up. <laughs> another, uh, another video of how my, I knit my socks. I already have one on my channel. I'll link it below. But these were two super fun pairs of socks. And I am going to go get a sock blocker so you can see them a little better. I pulled out my really beautiful wooden sock blockers. These are from Marsha, who is knitting left. And I will link her shop below. She's a really wonderful sock blocker maker, and she has other things in her shop. She's here in South Carolina, so that's really fun to support a local maker. But these first socks are off my circular sock machine, like I said, and I knit these up in the colorway C Prize, which is in my shop. And it's just a really beautiful blend of lime greens and purples and pinks and aquas. This is just such a beautiful combination of colors. I just love how these knit up. I think they knit up so pretty and um, it's always surprising to me even as a yarn dyer sometimes to see colorways knit up. You just never know how they're going to knit up. But I knit these in my usual vanilla sock recipe uh, which is on my 60 slot cylinder and if you're hand knitting that's 60 stitches around. I did a 20 row um, hung hem, which is just a folded hem. Then I knit uh, 50 rounds for the leg. I did a short row heel. And this is really similar to when you're hand knitting. It's really similar to kind of like a fish, ki uh, fish lips kiss heel or um, the heel that I really loved when I was hand knitting all of my socks. I love the German short row heel. It's really, really great. Um, so it's really similar to that. It's similar to an afterthought heel, something like that. Um, and so then I do 65 rounds on the foot and then I do another short row. It's, it's the same thing as a heel, believe it or not, on the machine. Um, and then the stitches, instead of um, hand knitting, usually you graft the stitches together. You do the Kitchener stitch on the tops of the toes. Um, or at the ends of the toes. This is actually on the tops of the toes. I was going to show you what they looked like as I got them off the machine, but I was just, I was actually too fast and knit these all up. But when you get them off the machine, the toe is kind of flat like this. And so this would be the arch or the top of your foot and the bottom obviously is the arch. But this is open right here. Instead of open right here when you're hand knitting, this is open and then you actually graft the stitches together. It's kind of a Kitchener stitch the way I do it. It's kind of a Kitchener stitch, but um, which is grafting it together. It's just a little different. I don't put it on needles. It has waste yarn here and then I sew it up using uh, an invisible stitch, it works out really great. So those are C prize. I love these, I love this colorway. Here's a close up of C prize. You can just see the beautiful lime greens and these like purpley pinks and aquas. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. You can see it has all these pops of dark speckles in there too, which I really like. I just, I love these colors all together. I think what I'm gonna do with these is um, I need to photograph them 
for the video and then I will probably put them in a gift box. I really want to do that throughout the year is set aside some items that I'd like to gift um, coming up during Christmas and just so it's not a mad rush at the end. And I think about that every year and then I never remember until it's Christmas. <laughs> so my next pair of socks is a one of a kind colorway. I did write the recipe down because I was experimenting with some, um, just some different colors and different, different techniques, but these are really pretty. So these are just a beautiful uh, neon pink with a rainbow of speckles around them. And I really, really like how these came out. I think they turned out so, so pretty. I'm actually going to give you a close up so you can see all of these like really, really gorgeous speckles. Oh, they're so pretty. I'm really happy with how this colorway turned out. So let me know if you'd like to see this in the shop because I think this came out just super, super pretty. So yeah, I was really happy with these socks and it was really, really fun to get onto my sock machine and actually get these done. I get interrupted um, when I was doing them the first time. And so I had to finish these up and it was really great. I just, I love cranking socks on my machine. It was a huge learning curve, not gonna lie. <laughs> I think some people have caught on to um, their circular sock machines so much faster than I have. It was, it, it was and is still very challenging for me for some reason. Um, it's just not very intuitive, but um, I've had a lot of practice at this point. I'm getting better, <laughs> so. Yeah, so it was really great to finish these two projects. So with the finish of my pastel fade sweater, I figured it was time to cast on a new project and I haven't knit a shawl in a while. So I thought, why not cast on a shawl? I had a shawl pattern called Good Vibes. It's by Nadia Creten Le Chien. And I have had it in my Ravelry cart forever and just decided to purchase it and cast on. It uses two colors of fingering weight yarn. And so for like the solid portion of the body, I decided to use I Heart Beach Glass. And here it is caked up. It's this really pretty variegated colorway with purples and pinks and mint green and caramel brown. Here it is right here. It's just a little baby shawl right now. <laughs> I just cast it on. And the pattern calls for a four millimeter, which is a US six. And so I am using a US five, which is a 3.75 millimeter. And it is definitely the tiniest little baby shawl. It's so cute right now. But I really like how this colorway is knitting up. I actually brought a uh, full skein of it uncaked. So you can see what it looks like. You can really see all the colors in it, all of the mint and caramel and pink and purple. So there's some really beautiful colors in this and just lots of pops of color. So the contrast I'm going to use is pink hibiscus. And I thought these looked really, really pretty together. Pink hibiscus is just a really pretty saturated hibiscus color. <laughs> Does that count as a color? Um, I named it pink hibiscus because it reminds me of hibiscus flowers so much. I would say it's a deep pink, like a raspberry color maybe. It's really gorgeous. I love this shade of pink. So I thought these would be really, really pretty together. And um, yeah, we'll see how it turns out. I was looking for a shawl that would be a really good mixture of easy, kind of mindless knitting. It would look good with variegated yarn and then also some really cool design elements. 
This shawl hit all three for me, plus it's a crescent shape, which I love. So like this dotted raised shawl is kind of an asymmetrical crescent shape. And this one also, it's just a really great shape. So these are the colors I'll be using and I'll just be working on that probably for the next several weeks. And it's going to be great. I'm really, really excited. Both of these colorways are, I believe are in my shop right now. And um, yeah, I cannot wait until I get done with this and add this in. I think it's going to be just a beautiful complement to this color. The other project that I worked on this week was warping up my 32 inch Kromsky harp loom. And for those of you who have been following me for a while, I have been talking about weaving up dish, dish towels forever. And so I finally got on it, finally warped up this loom. And I feel like with any project that I keep out here in the studio, it takes me a long time because the free time I have is during the evening and I'm spending that with my family and not out here in the studio by myself. And so any, you know, knitting, um, on my circular sock machine, weaving, those things take a while, um, unless sometimes I do take my loom into the house. But anyway, I digress. I warped up my dish towels and so I'm going to change my camera so you can see what the warp looks like. So here is my 32 inch loom and I have angled the camera down so you can see the top of the warp. This is an 8-2 cotton. It's for, if you're a knitter, I would say that the thickness of an 8-2 cotton is maybe about half, roughly half the thickness of a fingering weight yarn. So it definitely is like a thicker thread. It's called 8-2 cotton. It is by Maurice Brassard and I purchased this from the Woolery. It is a beautiful, beautiful cotton. I think it's going to make a great, uh, a great set of dish towels. And as you can see, I have so many different colors in my warp. Um, my seven-year-old who I knit the pastel fade sweater for, she is actually the one who chose these colors. <laughs> and so uh, let me go ahead and just run through this real quick. Like I said, this is a 32 inch Kromsky loom. I am following the directions from Trish from Fiber Love Diary, the way that she weaves her dish towels. And so I took my heddle here, marked the middle, and then proceeded to warp up 251 ends. Now what this means, it doesn't mean strands of yarn. I have double strands of yarn between both the slots and the, the holes or the eyes of the um, heddle. And so it's double stranded, I guess. I think that was one thing I was confused with is when they say, when someone says ends, it doesn't necessarily mean strands of yarn. It just means, um, the actual grouping of yarns, either one strand or a grouping of strands that either goes through the slots or goes through the eyes of the heddle. I hope that makes sense. As you can tell, I am kind of a beginner weaver, so I'm learning as I go. But so far I have not fastened any ends, as you can see. These are all just hanging down here, so they need to be tied on here and then I will begin weaving. But I thought this pattern was so, so pretty. I really, really love all of these colors. I don't plan on doing plaid. I plan on just keeping the stripes the way they are and then doing a, um, doing a white weft, maybe doing some of this pretty lavender weft. I love this blue color. This royal blue is gorgeous. So I'm just going to play around with some colors. I should be able to get about four dish towels from this. So we'll just see how it goes. I'm sure it'll be a great learning experience, but 
yeah, I just want to share with you what it looks like on my loom. But other than that, that's all I have to share with you this week. I hope you really liked this episode. If you did, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up. In shop news really quickly, I'd like for you to know that I have released my advent calendar pre-order. So if you're in the market for some bold, bright, neon, gradient fade advent calendars, head on over to the shop and they're up for pre-order right now. And I also have my new clubs for May, my May pre-orders. So those are all the new things up in the shop. And I'll also be having a shop update preview. I'll be filming that right after this. I hope you are doing so well wherever you are, enjoying your spring and finding lots of time to craft. I will see you next week with another episode. And until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.